Good evening. Citizens, administration, the rest of council. With that, we'll conduct this meeting in accordance. Mrs. Burnham. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Shannon. Here. Councilwoman Ray. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Cal Vice Mayor Eggleston. Here. Seven members present. With that, we'll have the invocation by Chief Trustee. Father well, Lord, we thank you for this day and thank you for the beautiful weather. We pray that you please be in this meeting and guide it. Let thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for sorrow. I need a uh, motion for the action on the minutes of uh, two, uh, February the 20th. So moved. Second. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. On uh, the first, first page of the minutes, it says that I read a letter from Jane Slanker. Uh, since it is referenced here, I think it appropriate that we include the letter in the record. Yeah, I probably should have. <coughs> um, Jane Slanker, Jane Slanker. I can resubmit them next meeting. I'll attach the letter and then you can vote on them if you'd like to do that. Then you guys can just take your. Is that okay? Yeah, I mean, they technically just vote on them next week, I assume. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We'll Thank you. One motion. I would probably pass a motion to vote on them next week since they are on your agenda already for this week, just to be safe. Move that we vote on these minutes next meeting. Second. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Jamie? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? I'm staying. I wasn't present for the reading or the meeting. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. That motion passes 601. All right, then I'll leave it to Mr. Bridge to introduce the gentleman. Thank you, Mayor Cook, members of council, members of the public. Uh, tonight we have a very special guest. This is uh, Pete Bales. He's from local government consultants. Uh, this past year I got to know Pete by working on various projects. It's been a pleasure to get to know him. I've always known his name. He's a very, very highly respected government official in our region. He is here to talk about council with their uh, planning strategy which and their treat. So, Mr. Bales, if you can take the podium. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Mayor and Council, and uh, thank you, Randy, for inviting me today. I uh, distributed a packet of information uh, for you to read at your leisure. Uh, it is a proposal uh, from my firm. My firm is called Local Gov Consultants, and like Randy said, uh, we are doing uh, some uh, minor work in New Carlisle already with regards to some records retention. Uh, but we are a firm that has been established since 2019, and we primarily work in southwest Ohio. Probably uh, over the last five years have touched about 30 different communities with strategic planning and project management and actually some interim administration as well. And as Randy and I were speaking um, a month ago or so, um, he asked if I had ever done any strategic planning for city councils and visioning for city councils, and in fact, uh, I had, and uh, some other members of my team has also. So I prepared this uh, proposal for you to review, and I thought I'd just uh, briefly go through it tonight and uh, see if there were any questions. <coughs> About halfway through the actual proposal is a PowerPoint presentation that I had put together for tonight's meeting, so I'll just uh, use that as a framework for my discussion, and, uh, and then we can go from there. So if you want to follow along, it starts with uh, this uh, page right here with the uh, Welcome to New Carlisle sign-in. 
You know, strategic planning uh, from a council perspective is a fantastic endeavor. It really gets you uh, all on the same page, aligned not only as a council, but also between the needs and vision that you have, but also with your staff, and then is a direct reflection of your community. So I really uh, applaud uh, Randy for taking this step and, um, and you know, at least presenting you with the option to do some strategic planning. The next page in the proposal or the PowerPoint is just a little bit about local gov consultants. Like I said, we've been around since 2019. We now have a staff of 11 um, consultants who are all uh, experts in different related fields related to local government. We have a finance director who was a, a former municipal finance director, a, a county administrator who, um, who worked in Miami County, uh, marketing and communications. Uh, we even have some legal advice from um, former municipal attorney. So we've got a big uh, group of people that have pretty much served their entire career in local government and now we're doing it on a consultative basis uh, with my firm. Our mission is very clear. We look to move local governments forward and we have the staff and our uh, experience in about any subject to help you with those issues, including strategic planning. Uh, we're located in Beaver Creek, and so we're very close. We understand the culture in Southwest Ohio. We understand um, the political environment, economic development in this area, and so really to do strategic planning in New Carlisle makes a lot of sense. And then our, finally, our firm's motto is, it's uh, not about competition, it's about collaboration. It's not about politics, it's about public service and serving our community. And it's about listening to your community and understanding what they want and then taking that and getting the job done. So that's uh, a little bit about our firm. The next page is about uh, me and uh, my team. There's only two of us that are gonna be working with you on this. Myself, like I said, I'm a former, uh, I don't know that I said this, I'm a former municipal manager Spent 24 years in local government. Started off as a Parks and Recreation Director in Beaver Creek, and then I was the Public Works Director in Fairborn and Assistant City Manager in Fairborn. And I even did some um, township administration recently, and currently I'm the Vice Mayor in the City of Beaver Creek. So I kind of understand uh, both sides of the table from an elected official's perspective, as well as um, administration. The next, uh, next to me is Charlotte Colley uh, on the slide here. She is the former Miami County Administrator. She's also been a Village of New Concord uh, Manager and she's got over 20 years of experience in local government and has uh, participated and conducted many strategic plans along the way. So her and I plan to uh, work together and tag team uh, this project um, if you so choose. The next slide is, uh, is why choose us. It's just about uh, understanding the culture between a successful city council and city administration. Um, we believe that if you have a strategy that you've developed between yourselves and it's very clear and concise, um, your administration will be successful. Um, like I said, we're well versed in um, the local government manager um, council relationship, and so we understand those d dynamics between your council and uh, the administration. And then all communities are different. So we will take the time to kind of delve into the important issues in New Carlisle and understand your perspectives. And uh, as we get into the details of this, uh, you know, we're going to meet. Um, for at least a half day session and really come up with the values and vision that you've got and create uh, goals that are tailored to do Carlisle. The very next page is called Project Approach. This is kind of the nuts and bolts of what we're proposing. We really plan to do kind of a pre-plan uh, survey of City Council and the executive team to kind of understand um, 
the strengths, opportunities, weaknesses, kind of like a mini SWOT analysis. This will be done um, probably digitally online, where we'll send you out a, a six or eight question survey just to kind of give us a baseline of what your perspectives are, what you think the uh, strengths of New Carlisle is, and uh, the challenges that you face. That will give us a really great understanding of when we go into our uh, half-day retreat. Uh, during that half-day retreat, it'll be pretty intense. We're going to do a lot of um, um, exercises that will get you talking amongst yourselves, with us as a group, um, in order to really understand what is important to New Carlisle, to your council, and then conversely to your team. Um, at the end of that session, we will have a clear vision for what city council um, would like where city council would like to go and goals related to that vision so that uh, your administrator can uh, take your vision understand those clear goals and have some tactics in order to achieve them the next uh, page just says project benefits and really just establishing that uh, vision uh, creates that unity between council staff and your community we hope obviously that your goals rep represent that that of new carlisle and the citizens uh, it will definitely improve the collaboration that you've got amongst one another and your team that improved communication and kind of everybody's on the same level playing field then you've got a shared vision and goals and you can and go from there will also really help with your budget process because as, as Randy starts to put together projects that he would like to complete, they should, they should relate to the goals and objectives that you've set forward. Um, and then it will also create some accountability. You'll be able to show your constituents that uh, you're all on the same page and you've got these common goals and you're really working for the community. And then the uh, last page really is the timeline. This is a, a fairly short project. I think that we can, if we can start and finish this in about five weeks time, most of it's gonna be just collecting responses from your survey up front. That'll take a couple of weeks. We'll take about a week to digest all of those um, inputs. And then the strategy session, we envision like a uh, four hour session. We could do that. Um, at a work session on a weekday evening, maybe from like 5.30 to 9 or something like that, or on a Saturday from 9 to 1, or whatever really fits your needs. But we envision that being about a three or four hour uh, session. And then we'll prepare a final report for you to, uh, to utilize. And then the fee associated with that is uh, 6,000. And we can get started whenever you're ready. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions or take any comments. So I have any questions for Mr. Bailey? Sir. Mr. Bailey. Go ahead. Uh, um, so are there other communities our size that you can give an example you've worked with and helped? Or? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we've prepared and, and conducted the same type of strategy for the city of Carlisle. Uh, I've implemented this type of a, a strategy in Fairborn. Uh, just went through it myself as a council member in Beaver Creek, very similar to this. I mean, council strategy and visioning is, um, the, the format of it is basically the same. And so those are some recent examples uh, in the last year. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, and we look forward to hearing hearing back from you. I guess with that, we'll go to the city manager's report. Thank you for coming, Pete. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Give me one second to get, get called up here. So we have under uh, department reports for the planning and zoning mayor's report that is attached. Uh, should have, council have any questions on that, be happy to entertain them. 
not, we will move on with the informational items. So we have a lot of uh, important documents that I've attached this week to, for council to start reviewing. We can start talking about them in the upcoming meetings. So the first one is the Main Street Curve Study that is attached. So council, please look at that. It's a relatively short study. I know Councilwoman Eagleson had brought some, brought some examples of uh, what she thinks could alleviate some of that stuff. It's all good stuff here. Um, but I want council to take a look at that and we can uh, have a, a better in-depth discussion at the next meeting when Mr. Kick goes with us, uh, since this does deal with his departments directly, he has um, some really good information pertaining to this particular uh, situation. Sixth Deputy, I want to get Council's opinion on this. So I had a discussion with Sergeant Lehman. Uh, we had a deputy that is put his two weeks in. He is actually leaving the department as a whole. So we're going to have a void on that particular uh, time slot for, for a moment. Um, we were told if we want to do the sixth deputy, I might want to go ahead and pull the trigger on that now because by the time they put the ad out, hire that person, train them, it could be well into August before that person is actually in our city. So I probably will go ahead and within the next week or two, initiate that sixth deputy as the contract called for. I just want to let council know um, what, that, what my goal was with that particular um, bullet point on the city manager report. Uh, but again, we do have a hole in the um, current schedule until we have that replaced. And with the addition of the six, hopefully we'll have a, a better coverage, hopefully more towards the end of the summer. Any questions on that sixth deputy? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Bill. Does that come with a county cruiser? We decided that we're gonna lease from the county for the cruisers. Mm -hmm. So we'll be leasing the vehicle. Okay. Yeah, how, how we do, I think we have two other vehicles like that now and they cover all the gas, they cover all the maintenance, et cetera and it's a flat fee throughout the year. Did they incorporate our vehicles to the county or are they still ours? We have some that are ours and then we lease some from the county. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What's our total cost gonna be on the sixth deputy if we do a fund? Uh, I don't have it in front of me. We don't ever exceed it. It was like almost like, I wanna say 700 and some thousand dollars, but I don't have that total cost in front of me. It's hard to gauge because we only get charged for what we use. So a little charges for the highest step deputy with the family insurance plan, but we only get charged for what we use. So for example, um, they'll hire deputy A, they'll charge us full price for the insurance and full price for the wage table. But in reality, they only get paid on a single family plan on the insurance and maybe they're, you know, step two in the pay scale. So what they budget it for and what we actually use are two different things. Looking at the uh, arrest, I guess I'm, a little concerned that our arrest, our tickets, and our work ethics are not showing a need for a sixth deputy. Well, Am it's I also correct on that thinking. Or? No, I don't think you are. It's winter time, so a lot of crime succeeds in the winter time. Once, once spring and summer hits, you'll have that. Plus, I mean, there's anything that could happen. The deputies could have been out for training or whatever, not been on the field uh, issuing. I know they had some issues with some protocols they were dealing with about asking people certain questions. I think there was a decline until they got that figured out, but for the most part, our, our deputies performed very well. Council already asked. Oh, yeah. no. What deputies leaving? Uh, Deputy Speckman. Who? Deputy Speckman. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, Council Coffee and Donuts, we need a motion to change that date. When we set the 316 date, the uh, shelter house was actually booked. Um, so we do apologize about that. So we have proposed a new date of 4-13-24. If Council has the availability, we need a motion to change that. Any questions on that? So moved. Second. Councilman Ray? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Sheehan? Yes. Okay. And moving on to the city manager report, we have attached the uh, draft New Carlisle swimming pool rules and regulations. Council take a look at those. We will be uh, making a little bit few changes on that, I think, this week, and then we'll be putting those into play. We just wanted Council to see them. Um, City uh, Volunteer Firefighters Dependent Fund Board. I'm going to ask Mr. Lindsay this. Um, me and Fire Chief 
believe that this was already done, but it's not located in any minutes. Does council remember at a meeting that I was not at that we appointed two people to the volunteer firefighters no. the fund board? This year? For this year? No. No. They have not been appointed. Okay. No, the, la the last appointments that I'm aware of was Mr. Lindsay and Mr. Cobb. That was last year. Was that last two years ago? Year. Well, no, last well, year was last year it was me and, and Cook, Cook, Mr. Cook. Oh man. Yeah. So, so, if you guys want the same two, just motion for that. I have no problem. Do you need a motion? Yes. It, yeah, yeah, we need a motion. The chief's okay with it. No, yeah, thanks. Second. Lindsay and Cook. What's that called? Volunteer firefighters the fund board. Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Shannon? Yes. Okay, thank you. And moving on to city manager report. A lot of talks been about updating our comprehensive land use plan. So um, Mr. Bales, his company also does uh, projects like that as well. So we have attached City of Eaton's comprehensive land use plan. It's something that you guys should probably take a look at. Um, I will be budgeting at the end of this year for 25 to, under, to undertake a new comprehensive land use plan. Ours has not been updated, I think, since 2003, so it's well overdue. Uh, but then that goes along with really how us, we do our job. Right now, it says that we go after ARPUDs, which is why you see all the developments coming in. So council wants that to change. It has to change in the comprehensive land use plan. So that goes along with the retreat as well and council revisioning. The comprehensive land use plans are really drawn out. They take a while to get approved because you got to go through public comment period. So I don't think it's going to be done in conjunction with this retreat, but it is something that the city really does need. Now that we have the growth coming in, we need vision. Um, council needs to share their vision about how they want the city to grow. Um, that requires a lot of public feedback. So this is a, the one Eaton I submitted from Eaton is a really good example of what like a small town city's comprehensive plan should look like. There are a ton of examples out there. You can just Google city of comprehensive plan. You want other examples, uh, but just take a look at that. Um, Cause like I said, at the end of the year, when we start doing our budget for 2025, that is something that we do need to budget out for. I don't know whether the rest of you had a chance to look through that city of Eaton comprehensive plan. Uh, it's a little dry reading, but I think it's very well put together, and I think it's a good model for ours. Yeah, and we're craving it. You know, the reason why we want to do the retreat and the vision is because because that's how we do our job. We, with no council vision, it's kind of the administration vision, and that's not how it's supposed to go. We're supposed to take the vision from you guys. So I think that we're we're very close to putting all the steps in place. To, to have the, the right mechanisms in place to really guide the city where we need to be. But I at least wanted to throw that in. It is about a 90 page document. Take some time, look over it. One other example, so let me know I can help you find some, but we really need something like that in place. Uh, loading and unloading an alley behind stores adjacent to public parking lots. So hopefully everyone knows where I'm at with that. So that is the back of Penny Lane, headquarters, all the Gert La Hacienda. We have the back of the stores, the alleyway, and then the parking lot. So what we notice is, rightfully so, the business owners will stop and unload and load product. We have box trucks, we have Penny Lane that has regular vehicles. They're there for five or 10 minutes, they leave. Um, we don't have anything to identify what them cars are, which is fine because our cops do a good job about going and asking what they're there for. However, we are getting complaints of just regular people stopping in the alley, going and doing their business and coming in and post a parking. So there'll be some legislation in front of council at the beginning of the next meeting is going to basically just do a short amendment of our parking uh, 452 chapter and it's going to further define who can load and unload there and it's going to say basically for business purposes only so basically the common citizen or common customer just can't block traffic and running and get their stuff we don't know if it's DoorDash. we don't know if it's someone just picking up an order but now that we're there and we see it all the time we physically see it with our own two eyes so um, that's going to be um, probably coming up. Um, Jake's going to take some time to define, do some really good definitions because business purposes could be, I'm on my lunch break, I'm here to get my food for business purpose. So he really does, needs to do a good job at defining, but it went council to be side blinded when you see that amendment coming up. Should you guys want to pass it, you can fail it, but at least wanted you guys to know about it. Any questions on that? No? Utility billing review update. So we had our staff meeting. We're going to be hitting that hard this month. So we're going to get some guidelines down, um, get some uh, maybe um, some ideas that we want to change and then present them to council. Ultimately, you guys have to change the code. 
this is the time for you guys to add your stuff in it too. They've already started to work on bits and pieces of it, but we're gonna really start ha uh, hammering it down the next couple weeks. So hopefully by the, maybe the first meeting in April, we can sit down as a group, be like, all right, let's schedule time to talk about all this stuff. Much needed overhaul with certain areas. Any questions on utility billing review? There is one other thing on here, so Quinn Creek's wife. Oh, sure. Uh, are you talking about rates or how the building is done or? Not rates, basically how the building is done. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Sure. Any further questions? Nope. Um, I have a Twin Creeks parcel information attached motion requested. Go ahead and cross that out. Um, Friday when I was looking into this stuff, I, I didn't have all the information I needed. Now that I do, uh, this is all located in the floodplain, so it's a moot point. So just disregard that particular um, blurb. Ongoing council project, swimming pool. I think it's great. We're going to revisit in June. I actually have a meeting at the pool. Um, I, I think that's going to go a long way, but we didn't notice that. So that's going to be on there uh, until we do have that meeting. Mayor's court and the council chambers, that is ongoing. Uh, the mayor's court really ties in the council chambers. I know with the council chambers, Mr. Cook, they're working on the hearing aspect of it. So once we get that tackled, we'll probably move on to the next. But it is on the radar. We are working on it slowly, but surely. I don't have any other additional discussion topics, so I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Go ahead. I was just curious about the one foot parking violation where you couldn't park within one foot of another car. I just, I really didn't understand that one. Is it? It's, it was in your, um, it was in the, I, you'll have to back up, I'm sorry. But in the mayor's court, it was a charge for parking within one foot of another car. Yeah, that's probably a charge that the cops give out under the 400. So they have, they have, it's, a, it's, it's common. You can't park so close to another car. Even if it's your own car? I mean, if you own both cars? Mm -hmm. huh, I was just kind of curious mm -hmm. about that. Do you know much about that particular? So it's basically, from what I was told, because we had somebody who was kind of confused on that, too. One of our officers was, or deputies was confused on that. Um, it really doesn't matter if it's your own car. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is still technically a violation. But if you don't have room to park your car, or that just right. I, I agree. I'm just saying that that's what, <laughs> that's all it is. It's, it's still a violation. Week, you're going to pin someone in. Yeah. That's well, if, do. you know, most of the houses, like in the, I don't know, in Northwood, like there's room for two cars. So if you got a bigger truck, you probably have to push up pretty tight on the car in front of you. I don't know. I'm just saying is is is, should there be some exceptions for that? Um, I would say no, because like I said, you're going to pin people in. If you have someone car here, somebody's going to try to get it in, you can't guarantee just because it's a driveway, no one's going to park in front of it. So I think when you have that distance in there, it's to ensure someone can get in and out easily. But usually it's driveway, car, car, driveway. I'm just, I'm not really. Is, uh, go ahead. Done, yeah. Is that a uh, ordinance change that happened? Or is that? It's probably under general offense code. It's that's general, the state. Yeah, yeah, probably the state that updates it. Is that is that state code? As far as I know, it's a local parking ordinance. It's, it's probably local. backed by the ORC somewhere. If not, then so it's where it's at. so it's what we did is what you're saying. Yes. Um, we don't know because a lot of our parking code, Mr. Yeah. Lindsay, is backed I by understand. the ORC. So the questions at this point can be directed to to me. The. I think we need to look at that because if you own the two vehicles that are in front of your house and you want to hit the bumper in front of you, that should be your business and your right and and your uh, your freedom to do so. Well, you, there's no guarantee that you don't have a right to park in front of your house. That's a public parking street. Anyone can park there. You're absolutely correct. But if both of your vehicles are in front of your house and I want to hit the bumper of my other vehicle, that's my business, not the city's, not the government's, and not anybody else's. So I think uh, so the stipulation. I, I kind of agree with Mrs. Wright. Maybe we should take a look at that and put some type of stipulation in there uh, that if it's your personal vehicles and the deputies can run the license plates and find out if you own both vehicles or not and, and uh, move on. If you don't own both, both vehicles, then they can do, do whatever they need to do. So the deputy is going to do more work I'm just, I'm confused. Uh, I'm confused as a one. Uh, first off, it's, if you guys want to make a motion to do it, we'll do it. But it just seems mm -hmm. like it's a moot point. 
because now the deputy going to run two cars, find out who owns it. It may not even be the same owner but the same address. It just seems like one, I don't know. It's been, in, it's been a law for a while. It just seems like one person got aggrieved by it, so they're understandably upset. But these laws are in place in, for, for a purpose. Um, so. And most of the laws doesn't benefit the public. It takes their freedom away and what they can do with their personal vehicles and their personal property, quite honestly. Well, this would be a good so, way to form a committee. You know, it, uh, and have it. You, know, you have your opinion. Laws. I have my. Apparently, Mrs. Wright has hers, and I don't know about the rest of the council. They're just looking at us. So. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay, <laughs> would you like to undertake that for the next council meeting to pull up the ordinance and make what changes? I don't even think? know what ordinance it was done under. It was down under the parking uh, violation. I think I'll I'll find it and send you the code, and that way we can get that off the table. But I think, to the best of my knowledge, that's probably the only ticket that I can remember within the last six months to one year on that particular section. You know, it's not something that the deputies are enforcing day in and day out. I think it's one of those situations, and if I'm not mistaken, I think that same gentleman incurred a couple of violations in regard to that. But I'd have to go back and look at it. But we can address it next meeting. Back to you. So that's all I have. You're done? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have one question. Go ahead, Mr. Bond. Did you have a chance to look at the other proposed or, or the suggested location for the fireworks behind Twin Creeks yet? We haven't set the meeting yet. No. Oh, I just didn't know mm -hmm. if anybody had run out I, there and looked. Right? I have looked at that location. Oh, we looked at it. We haven't had oh, a perfect come is, out there. Sure. Okay. It is suitable, however. Tree line. Your present location is about 900 feet from the ball field. If we go out to Twin Creeks, we're probably a mile and a quarter. Now, the other standpoint of the fact of it is from the ball field or from the pool, they're probably able to be seen. However, in the direct line of sight, the shopping center is gonna be off base. You're gonna be looking right at the shopping center, and unless they get up at a high oh. elevation, <clears throat> that's going to be lost. So I think that Mr. Bridge and Mr. Elner, Elsner and I will take a look at that, and we may even, if I can convince Mr. Elsner to shoot a couple of tests mm -hmm. from that location. Mm -hmm. okay. But again, I think we need to get permission from I don't know whether that's Don Gilliam's property, whether that's land bank, or who that belongs to out there, but we're gonna have to work from that aspect for future years. We've got quite a bit of time, I would assume. Okay. I was just curious. No problem. I'm glad to be able to give him an answer for that. <laughs> Anybody got anything else for the moment? If not, uh, committee reports. Do you want to jump in here, Mr. Grimm? Sure. The last meeting, I brought up a letter from a resident uh, who was upset the name of the new shelter house is Dillinger Hall, so I volunteered to gauge public opinion, put up a face on, uh, face on page book, yeah. <laughs> page on Facebook, and I uh, got quite a few responses. Some of them pretty good, some of them not so good. <laughs> One of them intrigued me. It was New Carlisle Heritage of Flight Festival Rental Hall. Wordy. Well, I didn't like that. <laughs> My lord. But it got me to thinking. I know it gets me in trouble. Heritage Hall. And in that hall, we can have pictures of people, places, and events that were crucial to our rich heritage, like the 1810 sign, like John Dellinger, like uh, Frederick Funston, like Ray Plunkett, like all the uh, 
police officers, police officers and firefighters that lost their lives in the line of duty. Um, I think it would make a, a great addition to the building Thanks. itself. Go ahead, Bill. Would that be firefighters and, and Leos that lost their lives in the line of duty in the city or to in, the, in the city? Okay. City, to the fire, best of my knowledge, city firefighters or city police officers. But we have never had one lose their lives that I'm aware of. As in, that's why I was questioning. I, I don't know. I'm going to say more positive. That, that we have had a couple of instances. You've had injuries, but no deaths. Where a deputy has lost his life in the county, but I don't believe we've had any of that here in this city. Thank goodness. And that's. Mm -hmm. Let's do a knock on wood right now. Chief, can you. Injuries, but no deaths that I'm aware of, sir. I, of course, also, too, the fire department was formed in. I, I kind of like your idea. It was a great idea. 1909. I think that that makes a lot of sense. My only problem is, are we going to have to build another shelter house to take the overflow? <laughs> <laughs> I when you start, I guess the word is picking out people whose names and pictures would be on that wall. In my time in this city, there have been many, many people. And I could go down and name the Bob Bakers, the Gordon Hensleys, uh, Charlie Schaefer, Louis Baker, I mean, Chuck Keller. The, the much color would be endless. Is, is, is there not a historical uh, David uh, McCorder. Yes, Does Dave. Do a him. historical. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what he calls this historical society or something that he has. Does he have some place he has his stuff on? On his view? home. Oh, his home. Yeah. Oh. Well, let me throw I don't this. Much people run through his home. <laughs> well, let's throw this out for discussion. Do you want us to contact Dave and get kind of get his thoughts? then bring that to council and let council make the final determination of whether we change the name uh, to David Heritage Hall. I'll give Dave a call. I like the idea of changing but in, the name. But in the past, I've he's... I've heard a lot of stuff about Dillinger, so... Go ahead. I, I would go change the name now, that we can go start and get some permanent stuff being done. I need signage, I need to get made. So the, <laughs> the name's great, but fill in the holes, you can do like <laughs> Name it Heritage Hall, if I'm understanding correctly. That, I, I like that name better than Dillinger. Then I move we rename the new shelter house Heritage Hall. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mrs. Burner. All right. Vice Mayor Abelston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chani? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. With that, I believe the 7 to 0 it passes. Okay. So. so, did you, was, how many respondents did you get? Better than a couple dozen. Huh? Better than a couple dozen. And they're all city residents? Mm hmm. Good name. Good. Awesome I checked them against the voters list. Any other committee oh, report? One that admitted he was not a city resident. I'm sorry. Can we ask what were the, what were the bad ones? Huh? What were some of the bad ones? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to identify. Oh, that bad. <laughs> okay. I just thought they were bad names. Like they're really bad names. Oh no. Thank you for doing that. Some of them were kind of dumb. Great. It's awesome. Any other committee reports? All right, I guess we move on to uh, members of the public. <coughs> if you will, be recognized to go up to the podium, state your name and address for the clerks, and uh, we'll hear what you have to say. You have five minutes. Go ahead, Janelle. Good 
Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I was just reading their motto on the front, front of this. I don't know anything about this, but I really was impressed with that last one. It said, it's about listening to your community, really hearing your people, and getting the job done. And I think if there's anything that our city needs, that sure is it. So maybe we can do that without a, something like this. I don't know, but I was impressed with that, so I just wanted to say that. And can I bring up a topic? Were they going to talk about the planning committee report? Can I say something about that? Uh, you talk about the last meeting they had? Talk about, yeah, sure. the last meeting. Sure, they'll be probably having that discussion next meeting, but sure. Oh, okay. Well, I think you said they were going to build it in that place right next to the bank, mm -hmm. which didn't bother me at first until I realized what place that was. Mm -hmm. And it's that beautiful, beautiful brick house. And that just <laughs> tugged at my heartstrings that they'd be tearing that down and putting the Taco Bell, that, Taco Bell there. It did not seem like a good place to me. But I'm not a fast food Taco Bell either, so I guess it doesn't matter. But I, that just seemed like that's a place where they should have the history of, you know, if they were going to have a museum type thing, it would be beautiful in there. But I just thought that sounded like a bad place to put the Taco Bell. But it's my own opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. For those that don't know me, my name is Christopher Clark. I'm running for Clark County Sheriff on the Republican primary ticket this upcoming March 19th. I just wanted to stop by and introduce myself to everybody, kind of give you a brief overview of what I'm looking to do and answer any questions you might have. Uh, so um, I'm 48 years old. I've spent 32 years in public safety. I started with Madison Township Fire and EMS in South Charleston, all the way across the other end of the county, where I'm currently the fire chief and have been the fire chief over there for almost 17 years now. Spent 26 years at the Clark County Sheriff's Office. I started off as a dispatcher in 1997, worked my way up through the ranks from dispatcher to deputy detective, sergeant, major, or sergeant, lieutenant, then major. Uh, left March 15th of last year. Um, and been running for sheriff since the 28th of March. Um, so um, I think we need uh, to see a lot of change when it comes to public safety in this county. Uh, one of the big things that I want to focus on is narcotics enforcement. I can tell you there's been zero narcotics enforcement, direct focus narcotics enforcement in Clark County since July of 22. Um, we had a small narcotics unit that ceased operations in July of 22 and has not been started back up yet. So the only narcotics enforcement you get are, is what these guys have the time to do uh, when they're not taking calls, taking reports, taking crashes. Um, you have, there's only so much they can do at that point. It's really hard to do narcotics enforcement in a marked car in a uniform. Uh, so we want to get a narcotics unit back in place. We want to start getting that focus um, because there's a $21 million budget that we operate off of the sheriff's office. and There's not a single dime that goes through that budget that narcotics doesn't affect. Whether it be the staffing, whether it be the, the how much uh, how many people we have in the jail, uh, how many people come through court, um, all of our costs are somewhat uh, associated with narcotics. Um, narcotics are a problem here. We can't ignore it. We can't let it go away. And 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 having to just get used to it is not the answer. Um, narcotics touches everything that we see, from the petty theft all the way up to the violent crime that we're seeing in, in the city of Springfield. People are not going to Beckle Avenue and stealing DeWalt drills to feed their family. They're going to feed a habit. Um, we've got to get ahead of it. Being reactive to it is not the answer. We have to be proactive. Currently, we have two deputies that work over in Dayton as part of a, a multi-jurisdictional federal task force, which is great, but that doesn't really help us here. In the last three years, only 15% of their enforcement has been done in Clark County. The other has been done in Montgomery County, Miami County, and, and outside, the, uh, outside of, of our jurisdiction here. We have to do a better job of collaborating with other agencies. Um, I'm currently endorsed by 13, uh, thir 11, 11 elected officials here in Clark County to include the prosecutor, two, uh, two county commissioners, um, the city, Springfield City Mayor, two police chiefs. Um, I'm endorsed by the Springfield Patrolman's Association and the uh, uh, Springfield Firefighters Association. Um, so I've got a lot of support behind me. And what that is, it's basically a promise that we're all going to work together. We're all going to collaborate. We're all going to get together and we're all going to get be on the same page. We haven't had that in a long time. We want to focus on mental health for the deputies. Uh, you know, um, we, we've seen over the last few years a lot of tragedy, a lot of things, and, and a lot of the deputies have been, been uh, uh, left on their own to handle um, the things that they see and the things that they deal with. We've got to do a better job at taking care of the officers, the deputies who work on a day-to-day -day basis so they're prepared to protect this community. 
Um, we want to uh, try to make it a more uh, inviting environment to come and work. Um, so uh, I don't want to take a lot of your time. I'm open to any questions you might have. Um, I do have, I am on uh, Facebook, uh, social media. I do have a website. Um, I'm in the data directory. For those of you who know the data directory, my direct line's in there. Feel free to reach out. I'm open to any questions that, that anybody might have to me. Go ahead, Bill. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Clark, can you tell me the total capacity of the jail? Uh, it's right around the, the, the published capacity, I believe, is 186 is, is where it's at right now. I'm sorry? Um, it, I haven't been there in a year. It was when I left. Our average daily population, I know it was up around 200. It's gone up and down. It was reduced a lot during COVID. And I know the numbers have not come back up since COVID. So um, right now they're probably pretty good. But the jail facility that we have there was built in 1980. Um, it has not passed a jail inspection in several years. Um, simply because of the footprint and the, the design of it, it doesn't meet state standards. So that is one thing that uh, the, 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 uh, the, the um, Clark County Commission is looking at is, uh, and there's some feasibility studies that have been published already about building a new jail and what that looks like downstream. Um, so that is something that would have to be done. The jail we have is inadequate. And that's part of the problem is we don't have places to put these people. We, if we charge somebody a lot, unless it's a violent crime of some sort um, or domestic violence, you get turned away at the jail. Um, you, you, you end up releasing these people right back into the streets. They go right back out and they steal again, they thieve again, and you're dealing with them an hour later. Um, it's, a, it's a vicious revol revolving door. So public safety in Clark County, we have to work together to find a solution and make things better as a whole. It's not just the sheriff's office. It's not just the prosecutor. It's not just the court system. These three entities have to work together as one unit in order to make law enforcement effective in Clark County. And we're not doing that right now. In your, your best guess estimate, uh, I know you're not an engineer or anything like that. What would the new jail, new jail cost? Um, I, if just off the top of my head, knowing what I've seen from some of the feasibility studies, north of 75 million. 75 million? Yes, sir. And, man, you can write a check for that, right, sir? Well, I'm, I'm expecting some donation money from you. So, uh, but uh, once no. we, yeah. <laughs> Now that, and that's one of the things that we have to look at is, you know, the, the building a facility like that is, is extremely expensive. We just got done building the 9-1 center. Just the, just the 9-1 center alone was over $5 million. That's a very small building. When you talk about the undertakings of a jail, it's, it's massively expensive. You know, just look at what it costs to, to build some of these fire stations that we see. You know, you're talking $20, $30, $40 million just for a fire, for a fire station. But it's a necessity of what we have to do. Jails are the same way. You know, it's a very expensive necessity. We have to figure something out. I don't have all the answers, but that's why we have to build a good team. We, that's why we have to collaborate with other agencies and we all have to be on the same page because together we can figure it out. And, and a new jail, I would assume, and this is just your opinion, uh, would be voted on by the county residents? I would imagine it would have to be. And more than likely a bond issue or something like I would, that? I would imagine it would have I mean, to be. I mean, that's what I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah, I would have to be. I would imagine something that big would have to be, you know, a bond issue of some sort. And again, in your opinion, what would uh, the maximum capacity of a new jail look like? Well, I know the feasibility study that they, that they recently had. I do have a copy of it, and I believe the feasibility study showed that uh, the, the capacity would be around 400 to 425 beds. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head. I haven't looked at this study for a couple of weeks. But um, I know it's 400, over 400 beds. That was their projected necessity for, Mark, what was it, 2045 was their projection? 2045 was a 425 capacity need. Yes. So that's what, that's what these, the, the feasibility study was showing. Um, is that set in stone? That's not set in stone. Um, things can always change, but that's what they're looking at is probably a four one or around a 400 bed jail. So it's substantially bigger than what the county currently has. More than double. Okay. More than double. All right, thank you, sir. That's all yeah. I have. Thank you. And obviously, we would look at grant funding as well with that. And I can recall back in the 90s, we used to sell beds to the, uh, for the federal side mm -hmm. and make money off of that per bed. So that, was also, that would also be something to be taken into consideration as well, as the dollars to be made to replenish what we spent mm -hmm. on the new facility. And that money goes to the 
sheriff's uh, fund? It all comes back, back to the general. To the it all comes back to the general fund. Go back to the general. So it, it depends on how it's set up. A lot of times, like we have, we have contracts with the city of of New Carlisle. That that money goes into a certain fund, and then it can either be utilized by the sheriff, or or at the end of the year, it start, cycles back into the general fund. Right. It just depends on how it's set up, and there's different contracts are set up different ways. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And just for the record, sir, what's your name for our record? Mark Lane. Do you have that, ma'am? Mm -hmm. Okay. I need to, I, my address is 9385 Shockley Road. Is, as long as it's on the paper. Thank you. Yep, it's right here. Anybody else got any other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I hope to have your support March 19th. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck, Chris. Thank you. Anyone else? I don't know. Can you run a 100 yard dash? Uh, I'm just here to introduce myself to uh, city council members. Uh, my name is Brian Wellbaum. I live at 80 East Clark Street in Northampton, and I was recently elected the mayor there. So I just came to introduce myself to them. Condolences, whichever it is. <laughs> Anyone else? My name is David Peters, 1685 Addison, New Carlisle Road. Um, I have a question for Mr. Bridge. Are pennant signs banned in the township? I don't have the code in front of me, so I'm not okay. going to answer. I think they are. If they're not, and I can't sign? recall here. What signs? These are the signs that poke in the ground, and they, they're like this shape, and they say like smoke on them in front of the gas station. Oh. They are banned in virtually every township and city. Uh, and I think here they would probably more of it temporarily. I don't remember call pennant being specifically named or banned. Okay. Um, so I've seen them in front of the gas station um, marathon, I think. Mm -hmm. Now I see them behind the old speedway, and I saw one in front of IGA the other day. And I could have talked to you about it one-on-one, -on -one, but I want the council to be aware that um, I think they're distracting and that it's a little bit tacky. And I would ask that if it's not banned explicitly, that you initiate some sort of zoning text amendment because I think as new development comes and checks out our community, it's not the first thing we want them to see is a big sign that says smoke and beer. And there's ones in Park Lane that we can't control, but I think we can do better here. So I wanted to address that on the record. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? I have never been here, so I do not know what I'm doing. So what do you need from me? Do, if you would like to state your name, you can. You do not have to say your address out loud, but if you could write it on the paper just so we have it down um, for public record, that would be great. So if you okay. could just say your name, and then you can talk about it. Okay. My name is Teresa Darling. I live in Park Lane. I've been a resident here while I grew up here in Clark County. Uh, I've been back here over 20-some years. There was a bunch of rumors going around, and I decided I was coming to the source because I'm tired of hearing the rumors. Um, one rumor is, is that we are a sanctuary city. Now, I have called today and made some inquiries, and I do not believe we are. Am I correct? New Carlisle is not a sanctuary city, ma'am, and there's an ordinance to prove in our resolution. Okay. Is Clark County a sanctuary? Is that to my knowledge? To my knowledge, the county is not a sanctuary city. Okay, that's what I thought, so I wanted to make sure of that. Um, the other rumor is, is that there's housing being built to bring in immigrants to be able to live within the city, that the city is going to provide for them. What not, I have heard, that is knowledge. not right Maybe either. The administration knows something with the mayor, but not to my knowledge. We okay. are not building houses for immigrants. We're building houses uh, for, families. for families to buy, purchase. Right. Uh, Right. You know, they got the money to get a loan, they can, they can buy it. Right, house. and I agree 110%. Um, I mean, these rumors are going around in the schools. You know, the schools are saying, well, if those, they come in, the illegal immigrants come in, this and that, we are not going to be able to do this. We're not gonna. And they're right. So my concern is only watching out for my city. I am not speaking against illegal immigration. I am not speaking against immigration. If they can come in here and they can provide for themselves and they can work, they have every right to buy a home and do what they need to do to better themselves. 
I just want to protect this city and from the rumors that are going around. So if you're telling me there's no roundabout way this is happening, so, we're not a sanctuary city, no. and you have no plans to bring in illegal immigrants here to be housed or live, it's not a plan. I mean, that's going to happen, but it's not a plan. Then I'm at peace with that. To my knowledge, none of what you said is true or accurate within the city. Again, the mayor, the administration may have something different to say, but to my knowledge, that is not going to happen, and I would never vote for that to happen. I think I can speak pretty much for council, and I hope I can speak for the administration. There are no plans, and I repeat, no plans in the works at this point. There has been no discussion about a sanctuary city to the best of my knowledge, and I will assume, if such were to be the case, that I'd be involved in that discussion, but there has been none. Okay. So my other suggestion would be, because these are rampant rumors, and they are going around this town, that maybe something can be written up to state our stance, you know, for Clark County, New Carlisle, so people can have their peace of mind. I mean, I have grandkids here. I was worried for their safety, okay? Um, that's the only reason I'm here, is to approach that and make sure that I got the correct information. Are you, are you talking about in the city of New Carlisle or down in Park Lane? City of New Carlisle or Park Lane. We have no control over Park Lane whatsoever. You'd have to go to the township trustees for Park Lane. But Correct. we have spoken the truth here this evening about this city, mm -hmm. that we are not a sanctuary city. In my opinion, we will not be a sanctuary city. Okay. And we are not building any homes, the city or any contractor, to house illegal immigrants, or, or anybody else, if they can't afford to buy the residence, they're not living it. Now, with that said, it could become a rental and they and the landlord rents, and that's his right. That's different, right. You know, that's completely different. But uh, everything that you've told us tonight, in my opinion, and I think I can speak for counsel if I can't speak up, uh, is a lie. Okay, and I need to go to the township for Park Lane, is that for, what you're for, saying? You need to go to the township trustees for Park Lane, they're in charge of the township, not us. Okay. Now, there is a sign on the way to New Carlisle School that the parents, where they drop their kids off as you go into the parking lot, it says F. Biden on it, and the children go by there. Is there anything that could be done about Again, that? Again, that's in the township, and that falls under... Uh, no, it's in New Carlisle. Oh, New Carlisle. Okay, elementary. I'm sorry. I, I, I was thinking uh, the middle school. It falls under freedom of speech, so, so it's a constitutional thing, and there's another thing we can do about it. Even though it's around the school and it doesn't matter kids. where it's around. Okay. I'd like to mention that um, my neighbor also had an F Trump sign. Yeah, I don't, it's not, it's, it's the not F food. thing it's that the is F. for the kids, right. is what I'm thinking. But what she did is she just went and knocked on their door and said, the school bus stops here. The kids get off right, right here. Right. Can you hang that somewhere where the kids aren't looking at? And that's all they did was knock on the door. You could probably knock on the door and say, you know what? It's just offensive. But I mean, you know, that's up to you. But that's something you could do yourself. I appreciate your time. Thanks for answering my questions. And you all are doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't hear that. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Mike Lowry. Uh, just a couple things I wanted to touch on her subject when uh, we had talked in the past, and just some of my friends and neighbors who know about that sign in front of the elementary school. Uh, I, I, I know that this is a whole constitutional thing. I don't know if it could be looked at. i would looked into it a little bit myself. I don't know if you guys would want to dig into it with the city attorney. Um, if there's an angle as far as it being next to an elementary school um, with language, and there's a couple, there's, hold on, there's a couple articles out there where places have have put that spin on it, if you will, 
that you know since it is next to a an elementary school you you know the, the profanity is not allowed it's got to be like 500 feet away or or something of that uh, nature it's just an idea maybe to, to to research i don't know if there's anything there or not um as uh, far as uh, taco bell in, in that building janelle i mean I, I eat taco bell but either way it doesn't matter to me if they come or go but that is a very pretty building but it's been for sale for a long time and that's you know that's their right to buy a building, even if we find it historically pretty or, or uh, you, know, you know, just a nice architectural place for the city. That's their right to buy it and knock it down. Um, it's just it's just how it works. Um, if somebody wanted to save it, they should have done it two years ago when it went up for sale or a year and a half ago. Um, and then, um, even though it's not the place I, for politics, I guess, Mr. Clark, I wish you the best and, and hope to see you in uh, future city council meetings because the sheriff we have now, I think, forgets where New Kalil is half the time, unless it's an election year or there's a parade. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Anyone else? If not, then I believe we will go to the uh, resolutions or ordinance section. Mrs. Burner. All right. Um, we have ordinance. 2024-07 this was introduced on february 20th public hearing action tonight an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for it and compliance services so moved no, wait, that this one? is the one no, no. we need to no that's the table yeah it was on the email sent out to council friday this one needs to be tabled oh yeah. move the table second would you like me to give an explanation of what's being tabled Please. Um, figuring out some contract uh, wordage and some additional pricing. Higher or lower? With different no companies? Or? I'm sorry? With different companies? No, no, with the bridge group. Uh, Shannon, you was the second? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. All right, move to table past the 7 0. Ordinance 2024 08. This was introduced on February 20th. Public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2023 61. So moved. Second. The explanation of this ordinance this is generally a housekeeping ordinance that we need to do from our budget discussions. So with the exception of the repairs, the Main Street uh, 331 building and possibly the custodial services, everything else was talked about in budget discussions. Here we go. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Pass the 7 0. Ordinance 2024 09. This was introduced on February 20th. Public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding that amends Ordinance 2023 08 and the current collective bargaining agreement regarding certain union wages. So moved. Second. Of this ordinance, uh, this ordinance will correct an error. When we did this legislation piece, the uh, the, ex the Excel sheet did not warrant the 25 cents additional, even though he should have. So the employee did not get he got paid it, but we need to correct it on paper. So the wrong thing was attached. Okay. Um, Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Passes 7 0. Ordinance 2024 10, introduced on February 20th. Public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding with the collective bargaining unit for the purpose of adding an incentive pay policy. So moved. Second. 
Mm -hmm. An explanation of this ordinance. Uh, we wanted to develop an incentive pay policy. Council worked with us and um, to, to develop the, po the pay policy, which is attached to the ordinance. So I just want to say thank you for council for working with us on this. It was a great project. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. That passes 7 0. Ordinance 2024 11, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on March 18th. An ordinance amending Ordinance 2023 52 for the purpose of correcting a Scrivener's error. Ordinance 2024-12, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on March 18th. An ordinance to approve the editing and inclusion of certain ordin ordinances as parts of the various component codes of the codified ordinances to provide for the adoption of new matter in the updated and revised codified ordinances to provide for the publication of such new matter and to reveal ordinances in conflict therewith. And other business, it's open for discussion. Anybody have anything else they want to bring up? I'd just like to say I appreciate um, the bin correction. I love that. I don't want the bins, they're so yucky in our town. So, so I'm see that. Go ahead, Ms. I had placed pictures of, you know, I do a lot, of, we're doing a lot of research on the curbs, and I had given somebody a picture of a suggestion other than what was on the report that we got, Do doing bump outs. I don't know if Main Street is wide enough to handle that with the semis but that would be my only concern that if you were to put this in, in the area of main street i don't think it would be wide enough without getting on to the uh, southbound curb or southbound lanes um, of traffic um, i i think it's a nice idea However, I don't, I don't think we're wide enough. I think it's impractical. Good idea, but impractical. <clears throat> yeah. And, and it would take parking I spots. Know. Yeah, it would take away parking spots. There's no parking down there. You it's can park there. anywhere down. South and the main, before the curb. It would slow traffic down yeah. coming into the curb. Or they just run over. <laughs> They can't navigate that curb down there properly. Obviously. Any other discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So we adjourn. Second. Yes. Councilman Bobby? Yes. Councilman Chami? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eagles? Yes. Thank you all for coming.